to start with the prayers. <clears throat> Om Sahana Bhavato Sahana Upunakto Sahadivyam Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadi Tamastuma Vishabahai Om Shanti 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 We are studying Taitri Upanishad with Shankaracharya's Bhashyam. This is a very unique study because we are taking up the commentary of Shankaracharya on Taitri Upanishad. The Upanishad is extremely important because it is able to give us a methodology of knowing our true self, our higher self, which is called as Sat Chit Ananda. The body and the mind, we know that we have this. But the problem is, this is not me. There is another content in this body and mind which is called as Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam. Together is called as Brahman. So in my body, there is something called as Brahman which is an awareness principle, an existence principle, a consciousness principle, a blissful principle, which I don't know today. I think I am the body born on a certain date and I am living. But I don't know that I am unborn. Na jayate mriyate va kadachit. Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, the 20th verse. The Lord tells Arjuna, that you are never born. You are thinking that you are going to kill somebody, but you can never kill the other person also from the consciousness point of view. So this is the teaching in the Bhagavad Gita is not about the body or the mind. It is the spiritual content in this body that was taught in the Bhagavad Gita. It is being taught in the Upanishads all the Upanishads have the same purpose. There is only one purpose of the studying the Upanishad. That purpose is, who am I? In this chapter, second chapter, Taitri Upanishad, the teaching is, our body is, our body-mind complex, which we call it as the jiva, the one who is undergoing experiences in life, that can be divided into five portions. The five portions are called as koshas, sheets or coverings. We have already dealt with this in very big detail. What we are now studying is, what is beyond the five koshas? which is the real essential teaching of the Upanishad. So this today's talk and the next week talk are extremely important to understand the gist, the essence behind the whole Upanishad. In the sixth Anuvaka, in the sixth verse, in the sixth uh, section of this chapter, Brahmananda Valli, the third mantra is the most important mantra of the whole Upanishad. I, I told you the second chapter, first section, first mantra is an important one. That will give you what is the nature of the self. 
which is Satyam Jnanam Anantam. This verse 263, second chapter, sixth, sec, uh, sixth section, third mantra, tells me how that Satchidananda Brahman, which is the nature of the higher self, how does it appear in this body mind complex as the jiva? Very important section. That section is called as Anupravesha section. Anupravesha means entry of that higher self into this lower body mind complex. How does it happen? So, for those who are studying this Upanishad with me, please study the portions in the notes dealing with chapter 263. The third section, I have already circulated the notes. 263 starts from 594. It goes on till 786. It's a long portion. But if you read it, you will understand. It is not difficult. But see, we spend so much time in writing these notes, understanding the notes, because these are very subtle topics. It's not something which I tell you within two minutes you will understand and then your intellect will accept it and then it will be able to abide in it. It's not like that. We do Shankara Bhashyam because... We want to understand the Upanishad in depth. So this particular portion, 263, from 594 to 786, is an extremely important portion. It will teach me, it has, got a, it has got a debate also in between. An objectionist will come, he will talk about how this entry is possible, Quite an interesting section, but it requires time. It requires, that's why I'm taking it uh, uh, very slowly because uh, it's a difficult section to understand. But if you understand this, then you understand the whole Upanishad. See, that is the, that is the, that is the best portion of it. If you understand Anupravesha, entry of the higher self, which is called as Brahman, into this body, if you understand that portion correctly, then what will happen? From my current body-mind complex, I can segregate the consciousness portion separately, the mind portion separately, body portion separately. What will I get out of this separation? I will get moksha. I will get freedom. Just by understanding. It is only intellectual understanding. There is no physical separation possible. In the same waking state, we have to understand how I can realize my nature as Brahman. And say, Aham Brahma Asmi. I am that Brahman which is revealed to me by Taitri Upanishad. This is a very serious study. It is just not learning the meaning and then going to the next verse and all that. This is a serious study of a seeker to understand the Upanishad in very great depth. Many people tell me that I don't go into very big depth in my talks. But this portion, if you study my comment, the, the notes properly, with the understanding in this week's and next week's sessions, each one of you can go into the depth of your being. You see, what we are today is this body-mind. But that is not the real being. The real being is pure self, the pure consciousness, from which I can know this body-mind complex, from which I can know this world. 
that Sakshi Chaitanyam is very beautifully described in 263. I have already started that verse. I will continue that verse this week. So this Bhashyam, we, we stopped in this 600 uh, slide last week. I will give you a gist first. Try to pick up this gist. Because once you know the gist, then you can understand the whole uh, the whole uh, commentary very well. Let us take the example of dream. Try to understand this properly. Because if you understand dream, then you can understand waking. If you understand waking, then you can understand the Super Vega, which is Brahman. In the dream state, what happens? I am the Vega. I create the dream world. And I enter the dream world. Seemingly, I enter the dreaming, dream world. I experience the world. Drop the world. And again, come back to myself on waking up. This process is called as Anupravesha, entry of the waker into the dream world and manifesting the dream world, enjoying the dream world, becoming the knower of the dream world, experiencer of the dream world, and then Withdrawing from the dream world, making the dream world unmanifest, and coming back to the weaker status. This whole process is called as Anupravesha. If you have understood the dream world, then what will happen? You can understand the waking also and the super waker. That super waker is called as Brahman. That super waker alone is, is the truth. That super waker is called as Brahman. The waker is our, our what we are experiencing now. This super waker enters the waking world, creates a waking world, enters a waking world, experiences the waking world and through the Maya Shakti can drop this waking world and go back to the higher self. Exactly like, you see, we already have the example of dream and we already have the example of sleep. In the sleep state, what happens? I have dropped the dream world. I am with my original self, which is Brahman. Similarly, in the waking state also, I drop this waking body and the world and I can go back to my self, which is called as Brahman. This self, Brahman, is a permanent, eternal self. In Sushupti, I come back to the waking very fast. After seven, eight hours of sleep, I come back. But once you enter into this Brahman as the real nature, I am free from this body-mind complex not only for this birth, but for the rest of all my Srishti time, whenever the Srishti takes place, I am ever free. That is the gist of verse 263. This commentary of Shankaracharya is a very elaborate commentary for this verse. That is why I have taken almost like 150, 200 pages of writing notes on this one section, one verse. So much Shankaracharya has written and he has gone into depth of this verse. In this particular section now, so that is the gist, but how does he approach it, you see? How he first talks about creation and then he will go talk about Anupravesha. So, um, what is what is saying in this section is that car, world is a karyam. 
ब्रह्मन इज द कारण ब्रह्मन इज सच्चिदानंद स्वरूप सेंशियन प्रिंसिपल दैट सेंशियन प्रिंसिपल एंटर्स दिस वर्ल्ड क्रिएट्स दिस वर्ल्ड सो इट इज अंशियंट बीइंग विच क्रिएट्स द वर्ल्ड एंड दिस ब्रह्मन एक्सिस्ट्स Suppose we say this now. This section deals with Brahman is existing or not existing. If you remember last week's session, we had raised this question of a Purva Pakshi, an objectionist. Does the world come from existence or the world comes from non-existence? Suppose you say if Brahman is non-existent, world. which is born out of brahman will always be experienced as not there non existent see this is where Bra uh, uh, shankaracharya explains to us the deeper meanings of existence he is analyzing existence and non existence and then he himself writes down a, a puro pakshi means objectionist he writes down can the world come from existence or it can come from non existence a non existent world is coming into existence or an existent world is coming into manifestation how do we experience the world do we experience the world as not there not there not there or do we experience the world as it is there it is there it is there shankaracharya says we always experience the world as existence the essence in the cause will be there in the product everything in the world a human being is existent an animal is existent a wall is existent stone is existent the mountains are existent the rivers are existent existence is common to sentient and insentient entities in the universe that existence principle is called as brahman you have to segregate the universe between existence and appearance karyam and karana gold and ring bangle and chain in the ring bangle chain itself there is gold but you have to segregate the gold separately so the content of any product is the material cause which is called as karanam so the karanam shankaracharya says brahman asti is the karan that existent brahman lends existence to karyam which is the product which is the universe that is the right way of understanding the world so first shankaracharya tries to clear clear up our ideas about this world jagat we are discussing jeeva jagat ishwara we are discussing the jagat the creation in these sections so we don't know this that is what is called as ignorance ignorance of the self is called as moola avidya i don't know there is something called as brahman something called as gold i don't know i think this ring bangle is real but i have forgotten there is there exists something called as gold there is exists something called as sachit ananda existence consciousness principle we do not in our day to day transactional world we never think of this but when we come to study vedanta the vedanta in veda veda asks this question you want to know the reality behind the universe but this is the way to understand the universe sat is superimposed on the universe sat can exist independently that is the realization 
in this in this process of creation and entry what are what is the purpose of this study the purpose of this study is to understand that the world is superimposed on this existence number 1 number 2 this existence can exist independently but the universe is dependent on this absolute super waker principle which is the real self okay so this this is this is this, this is what we are trying to study and this is this is the process in which shankaracharya tries to un takes us towards that anupravesha these are all beginning steps to understand the entry portion of that higher super waker into this universe dakshina murti stotram yasyaiva swaradam sadatmakam asat kalpartakam bhasate this particular verse is a direct meaning of the same subject matter which we are discussing tattvamasi you are that brahman that sat principle which has entered in this body mind complex that is what dakshina murti stotram the third stotram see dakshina murti stotram is a phd in vedanta if you if you go through all those eight and verses which are there it's all it's all it's all very very high level teaching of uh, vedanta in these stotrams the highest of vedanta is there in dakshina murti stotram tandogya upanishad in there is a verse there what is the proof that from nothing something has emerged this is the way shankaracharya refers to this verse and say from that non existence this world cannot come sadeva somyam idam agre asi this is the first verse of the sixth chapter second section of tandogya it says very clearly from that existence principle the whole world was born see if i have to go back to my root what is my ultimate re, uh, uh, essence this verse is extremely important through the verses of upanishads only i have to go in the spiritual journey and this verse of chandogya very very important verse shankaracharya quotes this very often and almost all his bhashyams he quotes this brahman is an existent principle and world is born from sat okay that is the conclusion of this section brahman is an existent principle just a revision portion here brahman asti the argument is shruti in the beginning say, said that the world has risen from brahman that is our main argument shruti says it my anubhava also tells me that i enter this body mind complex every day in my jagrat avastha experience the world as it comes to me as per my prarabdha karma joys as well as sorrows are experienced by me the jiva but this jiva has another higher status that is what i am trying to state brahman has to be existent the product will not be available for experience if the material cause is non existent okay so this this is what is just just a revision portion um kathu upanishad says naisha tarkena mati rapeneya very important uh, verse in kathu upanishad very useful to all the seekers this verse again shankaracharya quotes very often especially when there is a whenever there is a debate he quotes this verse he says logic and shruti shruti should be the primary 
Pramanam. Shruti means Veda, Upanishad. Whatever Veda says should be the should be taken as the focus, should be taken as the Pramanam, revealing the nature of the self. Logic, which is Tarka, should be taken as a support. Many people forget this. This is a problem for many, many Western thinkers who don't take the Shruti primarily. What they do is they take logic as the first because they give prominence to their intellect. Whatever the intellect is able to understand, analyze, they take that as primary. This is a great obstacle. This verse clearly says, Naisha Tarkena Mat Mati Rapaneya. The knowledge of Brahman cannot be understood easily by logic. This is explained to Nachiketa, a seven, eight year old boy who is asking about the reality. Okay, so just remember this logic should support, it is a secondary pramanam. It cannot be the primary because logic by itself cannot reveal. Without Shruti, pure logic can't establish Brahman. Nyaya, Vaiseshika, two schools of thought, they try to establish Brahman, the reality, through logic. And miserably they failed. In Brahma Sutra, Shankaracharya uh, writes commentaries as a debate between Nyaya Shastra and Vaiseshika and Vedantin. There in the second chapter, he clearly, when you study Brahma Sutra, second chapter, you will see all the fallacies of logical, uh, uh, the, the logic oriented, Tarka oriented philosophies. Because this is a, this is a, you see, what primarily what uh, Shankaracharya's uh, commentary is in that section of Brahma Sutra is, Veda is trying to reveal which, something which is not known by the sense organs and the mind. So what, what is Veda trying to reveal? Something beyond the senses which is a paurusheya vishayaha. What is logic trying to do? Logic is only trying to explain what the sense organs can perceive and it gives an inference to that. This is what the eyes are perceiving, this is the inference and this is the logic behind it. Therefore what? Logic depends on pratyaksha, sense organs. The data given to Tarka is from sense organs. But the field of Veda is not the sense organs. It is the higher self, the super waker, beyond the comprehension of the human intellect. We all experience only waking dream and sleep. But we do not know there is a reality which is projecting these three states for us. That reality is called as Brahman. That is the revelation of the Upanishad. Okay. Then the next, I'm just uh, that was the that was uh, that was the portion regarding logic and Vedanta. Then the next, uh, uh, slightly a uh, 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 the uh, uh, objectionist. He says, see how does how the debate goes on deeper and deeper. See, now this section here is this a little bit more deeper uh, logical uh, analysis of the opponent. Okay, fine, I understand you are saying Brahman is the material cause. Fine. Like a clay is the material cause for the pot. Seed is the material cause for the tree. A 
How then in that case, Brahman should also be inert only because material cause is Brahman, material cause is the five elements. Then Shankaracharya says, look at Taitri Upanishad, the second portion of the sixth Anuvak. The sixth Anuvak says, so Kamayata, this is where the Anupravesha Shrutis will start. This Brahman desired to create and it can never desire if it is a Achetana Brahman. Achetana means what? Inert. Can a table think of creating something on its own? No, it is inert. A stone cannot create by itself. For any creation, a sentient knower principle is required. A desirer is required. So, because it says in the Shruti, in the Taitri Upanishad, this Brahman desired to become many. Therefore, we can understand that the desirer of the creation is a sentient being. It is not insentient, inert substance. See, if Brahman is material cause, then Jadam, Achetanam, that is what Puro she says. But then Shankaracharya says, So Kamayata is being said in this uh, sec sixth section. If you read that mantra properly, there is a word which says Kamayata. Brahman desired to create, hence it cannot be Jadam. This is the Sankshepa Uttaram. Inert Karanam can't be the desirer of creation. Brahman is omniscient. It knows what all is required for creation. Omniscient means all-knowing principle. See, you and I know very little, little, small, small things in creation. But there is a higher super baker. We call it God. We call it Brahman. We call it Bhuma. We call it whatever. You, we call it Dakshinamurti. That that higher principle is omniscient. Omniscient is the only omni, a person who knows the entire creation, how he can create the whole image out of, how, how can he create and for whom the, can he create? All that Sanchita Karma of all the Jeevas is known to some higher self. Sarvajnya. He alone is the desirer who created this universe. So this section is Shankaracharya trying to refute a Purva Bhakshi saying the creator cannot be an inert uh, principle. Therefore, the Upanishad says Satyam refers to existence. It appears to be inert. But Satyam, after Satyam, what is the next word? Jnanam. Jnanam means sentient principle. So that the Brahman, which is, the, uh, which is called as the creator of the universe, is Satyam Jnanam Anantam. The Jnanam portion is emphasized by Shankaracharya in this portion. Therefore, the desirer is sentient principle. Now this sentient principle, now the Purva Bhakshi. What is he saying now? Okay, fine. You are saying it is sentient principle. Okay, I agree. But this sentient principle will only desire if he is apurnam, if he is incomplete. He has to acquire completeness. See how the Purva Bhakshi Slowly, Puro Bhikshi means it is a debater, how he keeps on coming back with different, different suggestions. So he says, Apurnatvam, desire is caused only when there is Apurnatvam. Apurnatvam means incompleteness. Suppose I, do, I, I feel as a jiva, 
I feel incomplete. I am not complete. Without a husband, I am not complete. Without a wife, I am not complete. Complete. Without a son or a children, I am not complete. I feel that as a jiva. But then, as Brahman, I am. If I am, if I am able to transform my thinking that I am not the jiva, aham Brahmasmi, this apurnata will be gone. There will be no samsara in apurna Brahma. Moksha is freedom from Apurnatvam. What Purva Pakshi is saying is he didn't he doesn't understand the higher self. He says Brahman is also a samsarin. Bhagavad Gita says, Prajahati Yada Kaman, Sarvan Partha Manogatan, Atman Yeva Atmana Tushtaha, Stita Praknyascha Dochati. Very, very important verse of the second chapter. It describes the jnani. One verse which describes the jnani in total is this verse. Who is a jnani? Jnani is one who has no desire in his mind because he is happy with the self. And he is the man who is of steady wisdom. Steady wisdom means what? All the time. His mind is steady. Why is the mind steady? Because the mind is attached to the self. And what is the nature of the self? It is always existent consciousness principle. Suppose you and I learn also to remain like a wise man, identify the self in us, which is pure consciousness, I can also abide, I can also say I am a Jeevan Mukta. Desires may come, but it is not a binding desire. If the desire is fulfilled, okay. If the desire is not fulfilled, that is also fine. Fulfillment of a desire depends on what? Prarabdha karma. It doesn't depend on my nature. Okay. So that is what Shankaracharya is trying to say. It is non-binding desire of a Ishwara. Ishwara has a desire for Loka Sangraha. It is non-binding. Whereas Jiva has binding desires. You and I, if I, we don't get an air-conditioned room in a hotel, we will, we will say that's the end of life. You know? So, we have small, small desires in life. What we have to understand is, these are all small, petty desires. They will come, they will go. It may be fulfilled, it may not be fulfilled. Fulfillment depends on prarabdha karma. Again and again, I repeat. Prarabdha will give us the desires. It will also give us the fruit of desires. The whole world is designed to give only these two things. Jivas are born with desires. Jivas get karma phala in this world. You work hard. You get one, two, three, four, five. But you don't get the sixth one, which is moksha. Through desire fulfillment, you can never get moksha. Dharma, artha, kama, you can get by desire fulfillment. But moksha, freedom from desire, you cannot get. Brahman is Swatantriyam. Swatantriyam means independent principle. It has no binding desires. Therefore, it is free from samsara. Jiva has binding desires. He is called as Paratantriyam. Paratantriyam means dependent on fulfillment of desires. To be happy in life. What does the jnani do? Jnani has understood the principle of the self. You and I are trying to do the same thing. In the eighth section of this, uh, uh, there is a Ananda Mimamsa portion where I told you about this last week also. The Upanishad says, a person who knows the self or, the, or Brahman as the self, he 
fulfills all the desires which one can get in all the 14 lokas, in all the seven top lokas. He gives you all the lokas in that section. But he, what does he say? A jnani gets all the fulfillment which person can get in other lokas. Swarga loka, Brahma loka, all the uh, lokas. Whatever fulfillment you can get. See, in every loka, you should, we should understand it is only fulfillment of desires. Throughout your life, my life, what have we done in life? Fulfilled our desires. Are they fulfilled 100%? No. It cannot be fulfilled because a new desire will come tomorrow again. No desire can be, can be say is 100% fulfilled. A new desire will be born as soon as one desire is fulfilled. That is the state of for all the jivas. If you earn 5 million pounds or 10 million dollars, you will say, okay, I'll be happy. But once you have earned the 10 million dollars, you will say, no, I want the next 10 million dollars. Then I'll be happy. So we all as jivas, suppose you have one child, you'll say, no, I must have the second child too. Suppose you have one house, you should know I have I should have a vacation house also. So similarly, our desires keep on multiplying. If I do a, B, a BSc or a, a graduation, you will say, no, I should do a master's. If you have done master's, you will say, I should do a PhD. If you have done one PhD, you will say, no, I should have the second PhD. So desires keep on growing. So what he says is, Bhagavan is not a slave to the desires. He is Swatantriyam, independent. Fulfilled, okay. Not fulfilled, also okay. That is a jnani. Right? You want tea, coffee, milk? Anything is okay. But for coffee is preferred. You can say preferences may be there, but no insistence. Desires are shuddha desires and ashuddha desires. Ashuddha desires makes me a samsarin. It enslaves the jiva into this body. We have to understand this principle extremely well. Don't become slave to your desires. The moment you become slave, see, sometimes what happens is, if our prarabdha karma is there, you become a slave. You just become. There is no. There is no. There is no method to. Uh, there is no method to come out of this. Prarabdha karma. The only method is come. Come to this jnana. Then you, then it, you can come up. So, shuddha, what, that is ashuddha desires, kamas. Shuddha kama, what is it, shuddha kama? Shuddha kama means you are a asamsarin, not samsarin, asamsarin, opposite of samsarin, jivan mukta. It is a voluntary activity for you. Desires may be fulfilled, may not be fulfilled, but you are happy with yourself. What is the self? Self is all alone and blissful. That is the knowledge we get from Taitri Upanishad. The first mantra says, Brahman is the Karanam for the whole Jagat. I am the Karanam. Understand that and remain abiding in the self. The whole universe Right now, this universe which we are experiencing is a karyam. It's a product. The product cannot survive without the karanam. And Brahman is the karanam. How desires are indicated psychologically? Uh, psychologically uh, how do I know whether I have a desire or not? When I miss something, that is the indication of incompleteness, apurnata. See, psychologically also Vedanta tries to explain to us how to analyze our mind, how to see our mind, how to witness our mind, and how to be, uh, how to be not taken over by the mind. Pure desires, if you have, Go and fulfill it, no problem. You want to go and help somebody, no problem. It's a very pure desire. 
you can you can help you can feed so many thousands of people no problem go ahead and feed it you have the money you have the wealth go and feed you want to build a temple go and build a temple if you want to build an ashram build an ashram you have the facilities you have the you have the factors go ahead these are all shuddha shuddha uh, kamas the first cigarette you say yes then you have the you have the freedom to say no also but the hundredth cigarette you have no freedom to say yes or no the cigarette will tell you you have to have it there is no freedom it i'm just giving you an example of cigarette this is a, uh, you can take any example the first sari the hundred sari will make you buy the sari as soon as you walk into a shop because the sari will control your mind not you will control whether i can buy it or not i mean this is just an example of swatantra and paratantra the purpose of creation is to fulfill the desires of jiva according to punya papa that's what i said punya papa means prarabdha karma your karma will decide whether you have this desire today you get fulfilled it is the law of karma which will make you fulfill the desires when did ishwara create jiva that's a big question which is answered in vichara sagara what is the answer ishwara never created a jiva jiva is anadi he never came into existence because jiva ultimately is consciousness if he realizes i am not this sharira trayam suppose you and i uh, realize i am not this gross body i am not the sukshma shariram the mind i am not the karana shariram i am the satchidananda principle then what happens to a jiva he is never born he only had a misconception that he was the body that is why veda is very useful upanishad study is useful because jivatvam is badaha can be negated suppose jivatvam was not badaha suppose i am a, actually a sorrowful jiva all throughout if that is my intrinsic quality then no study of veda will be useful the study of veda upanishad is useful because samsaritvam is bhaditatvam it can be negated by knowledge okay in tatva bodha it says jiva is already in ishvara in potential form that means in my sleep state i am nothing that jiva hood is lost i become one with ishvara this many upanishads have said it i also say it in many of my talks that in sleep state we all become merged with ishvara which is the karana prapancha ishvara is what is the definition of ishvara the causal prapancha ishvara is nothing but it is the causal potential form unmanifest form of the whole creation so jiva is always there in the karana prapancha but in a potential form but we don't know that see the moment we think that we are the body in the waking state and we think the waking state is the only state which normally without coming to vedanta that is our knowledge what is our knowledge this waking state is the only state uh the uh, waking state is the only state uh, which is available to us uh, and there is no other state beyond this suppose we do this then the then the problem is we will never be able to get moksha vedanta says that you have a higher self which if you come to know you can free yourself from this body mind complex so many okay now coming back to kama yaga creation has two factors samanya karanam and vishesha karanam 
Vishesha karma means uh, it is it is Samanya karma means a general cause. General cause is Ishwara's creative power, which is called as Maya Shakti. What is the Vishesha karma? Vishesha karma is provided by Jiva's Punya Papa karmas, the Sanchita karmas that contributes to the creation. Ishwara's Maya Shakti also contributes to the creation. Okay. That is what in this uh, uh, in this paragraph uh, Shankaracharya says, Brahman is Purnaha in spite of his desires. Human beings have uh, 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 have uh, uh, Triputi. They are born with the Triputi. Triputi means knower, known, and the knowing process. Through that process, we become a Purnaha. Uh, I mean, this is just a complete explanation of the of whatever I have covered already. Uh, in Kaivali Upanishad, Mayeva Sakalam Jatam means what? The whole creation in me alone. Here, me means you should understand. That me here means consciousness principle. Nothing is away from me. Everything is included in me, the consciousness, such principle. Uh, Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, talks about the Supreme Self. See, the 13th chapter, as I told you very often, is a very important chapter. Anadetya, Anadetva Triguna, Natva, Paramatma, Avyaya, Shari, Restopi, Kaunteya, Nakaroti, Nalipyate. What here it says, Lord Krishna says, is that I am untouched by the attributes of the body. Body does actions, body gets results. Body mind complex gets the results of action. But I am untouched means what consciousness is never a factor in the in the transactions. In its presence, everything is happening, but it doesn't participate in any transactions. Okay, this is the uh, revision portion. Uh, I'll just skip this because we have just done all that. In Mandukya Upanishad, also, there is a very this famous uh, verse in the second chapter, the twelfth verse. Mandukya Upanishad, the second chapter, is Vaitatya Prakarana. Vaitatya Prakarana means that the whole creation is Mithya. That is, the in the second chapter of Mandukya, we will be doing Mandukya for, in January next year. At that time, you will come to know the full details. But here, in this verse, this Atma is self-luminous. And through its power of Maya, it imagines the objects in creation. It manifests, it unmanifests. So this is what is said in Mandukya Upanishad. What it means is the higher self has manifested the whole creation. It can withdraw the creation also uh, to itself. Okay. So these, you see, in creation, if you understand the creation like this, then it is easy for us to understand what is freedom from desires. See, uh, the, the whole purpose of creation explaining in this particular 263 is to ultimately come out of bondage. Bondage means attachment to this body-mind complex as my real self. Okay. Okay, the next section uh, is a continuation of the, of the uh, nature of the desires. I shall become many... See, I shall become many is the, this, this particular slide, 624, is the start of Anupravesha. Here only he says, I shall become many. 
बहु श्याम प्रभूतम श्याम भावेयम दैट मींस ब्रह्मन डिसाइड डिजायर टू बिकम दिस क्रिएशन इन शॉर्ट दैट्स व्हाट इट मींस एक्चुअल सृष्टि स्टार्ट्स विद सो कामयत सो कामयत रिफर्स टू आत्मा from where this whole creation is born okay you see in the first uh, verse itself of this it was said from the whole creation brahma vida apnoti param satyam jnanam anantam brahma it defines the creator and then what does it says it says you should know this creation Uh, this creator in your intellect knowing this creator in this intellect will free you from the samsara problem brahman has to be recognized as atma in the heart heart here means intellect okay see this uh, uh, in um, upanishads jiva is equated to brahman in all the mahavakyams tatvamasi i am atma brahma brahma as aham brahma asmi pragnanam brahma all these four mahavakyas they equate the jiva with the super waker which is the pure consciousness self why because that is the truth ishwara's mind and jiva's mind jiva's mind is full of prithis desires ishwara's mind is maya kalpitam that is also uh, it is maya shakti it is not like the human mind which is created out of the pancha bhutas uh in this verse of panchadasi chapter 4 19th verse the whole creation is described as modification or a function of maya shakti whole creation is a modification of or a function of maya shakti which belongs to whom not the jiva jiva has only a nidra shakti it can go to sleep project a dream that's all but the waking state is projected by ishwara through his maya shakti and when the jivas enter the enter the body with their vrittis then they get the enjoyment of the world that is what is said in panchadasi okay it differentiate ishwara and jiva enjoyment of the object is a modification of the antakarana which belongs to the jiva whereas the functions of the world belongs to the power of maya this slight difference you should try to note what is the difference between jiva and ishwara jiva is with a with a attached to a specific mind whereas ishwara is attached to the maya shakti okay that is why uh, there can be many many jivas because as many minds are there so many jivas are there in this world how ishwara becomes many that is what is the subject matter now we are getting into it's a very long process of inquiry how ishwara becomes many is it like the parents multiplying themselves by getting children which is multiplication that means they multiply themselves is it like that that is this is the beginning of the inquiry there are many many theories which so many different puro pakshis they will put and then shankaracharya will give the final answer 
and then he will say that I'll, I'll give the answer later, otherwise the suspense will be broken. Okay, how Ishwara becomes without producing children outside? Okay, how does it, let me, um, so is it like that, is it like that, this is one methodology that they multiply, does Ishwara multiply himself? That is one methodology uh, which the Puru Pakshi suggests. Uh, Nothing is outside Brahman. This principle we should always keep in mind. There is nothing outside consciousness at all. Existence consciousness, Satchidananda, is the ultimate. Entire creation exists in Maya Shakti of Brahman. And Tattvamasi, when we say, we are talking of the unmanifest universe. Maya is unmanifest universe. What lies beyond the unmanifest is your real self. That is what is called as Brahman. Maya's potential. What is Maya's potential form? Maya's potential form is all the Nama Rupas in creation. Nama Rupa means what? Name and form which we can see. Name is given to a form. See, Pratyaksham, form means color. Uh, uh, form also includes the sound and so on. All the other, all the five sense organs and the five sense objects are nothing but forms. Names are given to those forms and this Name and form have got two, two states of existence. One is manifest, another is unmanifest condition. Unmanifest in sleep state, manifest in waking state. So all what we experience is nothing but name and form, which is multiplication of Brahman, that is what Puru Pakshi is saying. Now, all these theories, I will go to the end of what Shankara is saying, will come in the end. But we are now studying all the other um, uh, prince, uh, theories behind creation. Ornament can't exist outside gold. Ornaments have existence borrowed from gold. So, all the Nama Ropas are existing in time space coordinate. The moment you go out of name and form, then you have gone, then you have gone out of you have gone out of the manifest condition, you have gone into unmanifest condition. That's what we should understand. Name and form, I, which I told you in short, name and form have got two conditions: manifest, unmanifest. Okay. So, waking state is what? Name and form. Name and form, you, have, you are given a name, I am given a name. Three billion people are given names. They all come, they are all manifest form. In the sleep state, they become unmanifest. So, multiplication of one Brahman into many forms is not correct according to Shankaracharya. Brahman can't be actually multiplied nir, nira, uh, because it is uh, niravayabam. Niravayam means with what? It has no parts. Brahman is without parts. It cannot be uh, uh, broken up into many jivas. You see, if the ultimate uh, anal uh, th uh, the answer will come later in the later section, but these are all different, different theories which are uh, being, uh, uh, which are being negated by Shankaracharya. Uh, okay, so one theory is uh, parents multiplying, Brahman becomes, uh, uh, he, uh, Brahman divides himself, so that is negated, he cannot divide because Brahman is indivisible. 
Um, okay, then there is something called as an enclosure and enclosed. You see, Akasha is enclosed, pot is the enclosure. Brahman is the enclosed Upahitam and the entire universe is Upadhi, which is enclosure. This is, this is a theory which is acceptable, which is there is an acceptance to this theory. This, uh, uh, this is very, very popular also. Uh, that uh, th this, is, uh, this theory, um, we'll, we'll go into details a little bit later, but um, this is accepted by many, uh, by even Shankaracharya in some of the texts, he accepts this theory of Upahitam and Upa. Main thing you should keep in mind is the space. How the space can be enclosed in a pot. Unenclosed space is called as Brahman. Unenclosed consciousness is called as Brahman. Uh, can existence appear as big and small? In sun, there is a big existence, whereas in an atom, small existence. Shankaracharya says it's not possible. Existence is existence. There is no big or small. Big and small belongs to the upadhi, the container. Okay. Pot and space have the same degree of reality. This is an important fact. I mean, these are all concepts. We are now building up the concept of Anupravesha. How that entry of Pure consciousness happens in creation. Uh, see, when we take the pot space example, they both belong to Vyavaharika Satya. What Shankaracharya says is, in the case of Brahman and this world, there are two different realities. One is Paramarthikam, another is Vyavaharika. Okay? In the case of enclosure and enclosed, we are talking of the same order of reality, but here enclosed is of a higher order. Consciousness is a higher order. Enclosures are the lower order. Therefore, it is a Satyam Mithya principle. This is how Shankaracharya develops this entire uh, uh, Anupravesha uh, uh, section. Uh, where he says that consciousness is the higher self because it is all-pervading and the upadis are in Vyavaharika level, whereas consciousness can exist by itself and because it can exist by itself, it is a higher order, it is Satya. Okay. Body and consciousness. Body is the enclosure. Consciousness is the enclosed. See, how, how does the Anupravesha take place? Anupravesha means what? That pure self which can exist by itself, which is a higher nature, which is what I am in my sleep state, that is now available in this body-mind complex because body-mind is an enclosure. See, this is a very, very subtle topic. Try to pick it up. Uh, you, as, you, as you learn this process of enclosure and enclosed concept, enclosed, enclosed is paramartikam, enclosure is vyavaharikam. Try to understand these two statements. Statement is what? Body-mind is Vyavaharika because it is limited. What is unlimited? What is uh, limitless? The limitless is consciousness. It is always there. It is Vivartha Karanam. Vivartha Karanam means it is changeless. Right from the time, I mean, the, it is beyond time. Time comes and goes in consciousness. See, this is where if I understand the higher self through the Upanishads, I can abide in it. 
and I can say that that is my real nature and whatever experiences I have is of the lower nature of body-mind complex. Consciousness is enclosed by something in time and space. And that is Nama and Rupa. So now what are we saying? There is an enclosed which is Mithya and there is an enclosure which is Satyam. You have to come to this level of, see, from creation of the five elements, from Akasha, all that. Now, ultimately, where do we have to come? Satyam and Mithya. What is Satyam? Enclosure, enclosed, enclosure is, sorry, I think I put this wrongly. Enclosure is Mithya, enclosed is Satyam. This is, there is a correction here. Enclosure is Mithya, enclosed consciousness is Satyam. Wherever there is Mithya, there will be Satyam. Two Satyams are not possible because you can't have two, two, two truths. You can have only one truth and another is false. You can have many false things, and may, but one truth. That is why we have the whole universe as, uh, as Mithya, but the truth is only one, which is Satyam is only consciousness. Okay? It is the same in the past, present, and in the future. It will not change. Satyam means what? It is changeless. Whereas, Mithya can change. Okay? Sthula Prapancha, Sukshma Prapancha, Karana Prapancha, or the Sharirams are name and form. Nama, Rupa. The three states, uh, the three bodies, gross body, subtle body, causal body, they're all name and form. What we normally think name and form can't be counted as a second entity at any time. The, the, um, the, the, the the Satyam is always there. Name and form is changing. For example, our, our states, you see, our waking state changes to dream state. Dream state changes to sleep state. Sleep state again come back to wake. So these three states are changing. Our normal thinking is first there is Advaitam, then the creation comes, then there is Pralayam, Again, Advaita will come. But what Shankaracharya says is, this is not true. He will give you the final answer when we go in towards the end of the section. Okay, the independent existence. Pot can, has a dependent existence. Clay has independently existed. Similarly, Brahman can exist independently, which is like the clay. What means like the Sharirams, they have dependent existence. That means right now, bodies are existent because of consciousness. I experience the entire waking state because of the independently existing principle, which is consciousness. Then I remove this waking state, what remains, what remains is Brahman. Like when you remove the pot, when pot gets destroyed, what remains? Clearness. Similarly, when all the three Nama Rupas, the three states, the three bodies, the Pancha Koshas are removed, what remains? Brahman alone remains. This Brahman is my real nature. Brahman with one set of name and form and Antakaranam 
is called as the knower. Pramata, Nyata. Nyata means what? Knower. The same Brahman with another name and form together with Vritti is called as Jnanam. See how deep we are going now. We are coming to knower, known and knowing principle. One set of Namarupa with the objects or Vishayas in the outside external world which is made up of five elements that is called as Nyayam. We are now coming to the analysis of what is knowledge? How knowledge takes place in the human intellect? Knowledge takes place only when there is a Nyata, knower. And who is the knower? The knower is the Antakkaranam. See, Shankaracharya is going deeper. These are all, uh, what I'm explaining is only what Shankaracharya has said all here. These notes which are here is only explanation of what is here. Nyata, Jnanam and Nyayam. And what is Nyayam? Nyayam is the same consciousness principle with the external world of objects which is belonging to the five elements is called as Nyayam. Is the known object. Who is the knower? The knower is the consciousness. In all this consciousness is there. Don't forget. You see, consciousness, Brahman is always there. At all times it is there. Never try to say, I will see the world without uh, 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 and I'll see only consciousness. At right now, along with this waking state, consciousness is there. In the sleep state, consciousness is there. In the dream state, consciousness is there. Consciousness can be known by eliminating the Nama Rupas and the Antakkaranam and the Vrittis and the Vishayas. I only remove the, the enclosures of these three, either a Vishaya object, either a Vritti, a thought, or the Antakkaranam, which is called as the Nyata. Okay. So this Triputi is the Jiva. Who is the Jiva? Now you are able to understand that pure consciousness together with this Antakkaranam, the mind is the knower principle in this body. See, these nodes are extremely important because they take you to the depth of your personality. Nyata, Jnanam, Nyayam. Understand, try, this 647 slide is very, very important. Antakkarna Upahita Chaitanyam is called as Nyata. Upahita Chaitanyam is what? Enclosed consciousness in where? In the Antakkarna. In my mind, that consciousness, when it is enclosed, it is called as the nyata, the knower in this body. Without the knower, can the known exist? No, cannot exist. Is there, if the known is there, without the knower, there is no use. Unless there is an experiencer, then only the experienced objects have got any meaning. If there is no experiencer at all, then the objects are not even called as objects. They are almost called as non-existent. Similarly, if the nyata is there and there is no, and there is no known objects, no use, because nyata will come into place with the Antakarnam, only when there is an objective universe outside. Without the objective universe, you are what? You are Brahman. Now you will believe, yes, yes, yes. Now what you say, in my sleep state, I am Brahman. I have no doubt about this. Upanishad has said it. Chandogya Upanishad says, Brahadhanik Upanishad says, 
now it makes sense to me because I have understood the concept of Brahman. I have understood the concept of knower, known and knowing principle. What is within the Avahara and beyond is called as Brahman. See, this is what is the meaning of immanent and transcendent. That pure consciousness is both immanent, means it is in Vyavahara. It is there. It, it is in and through the three states, but it also exists beyond the three states. That is what is called as Bahusya. Bahusya means this one consciousness is pervading the whole universe of names and forms. So one word, Bahusya, Shankaracharya has explained in about 30, 40 pages. Okay? Now the next portion is um, tapas. This is the next word which is used by which Shankaracharya analyzes in the in the in the in the mantra two six three. If you go to the mantra, which is the Mula mantra, you will see tapas coming there. How does Brahman uh, experience this world? That is what is the next section for discussion. Saha tapaha tapyata. How does Brahman experience this world through tapas, through visualization, in the form of visualization, mental visualization? we are able to experience the manifest world. So similarly, through the power of Maya Shakti, which is called as tapas here, the entire uh, experience, experiential, uh, experiential ship happens with the help of this Shakti. Tapas is Jnanam. Visualization of a Jiva Rashi. Ishvara thought what type of body is required for each uh, for each karma phalam. Then he made that type of a body. Tapasa Chiyate. Munda Kupanishad has this verse. There also tapas is, comes in. What is tapas? It is the total creative urge in Brahman. Our creative urges is very small, but his creative urge, because he is all, all uh, uh, you know, all knowing principle, uh, he has got a great shakti for creating the entire universe. Uh, Mundo Kupanishad talks about his nature in this verse, which is uh, which is a uh, which is a formless self. And it is self-shining, self-conscious, self-evident principle. Uh, the visualization of Brahman does not require a mind like us. We visualize with a Bhautika mind. That is what Shankaracharya now uh, tries to explain to us. That the uh, the visualization of Brahman for this creation is a Shakti. These All these verses are talking about that Shakti principle, the power, which belongs to the, which belongs to the uh, Ishvara. Fourteen Lokas, in all the lo uh, uh, Yugas, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, Kali Yuga, all the Yugas are all projections of this Shakti. Dakshina Murti Stotram, earlier we saw the third verse. Now this is the second verse. The second verse talks about creation. Pija Syanti Vankuro Jagadidam Pran Nirvikal Punaha Maya Kalpida Desha Kala Kalana Here, Maya Kalpitam. 
Maya means what? Maya Shakti. Kalpitam means what? Projected. Vaichitri Chitri Kirtam. Vaichitri means the whole multi, the varied universe which we experience. Mountains and rivers and Swiss Alps mountains and you know, you can see Niagara Falls. Everything is what? Maya Kalpitam. It is a Shakti of that Ishwar which is projecting this entire universe. Including time and space. For all the jivas, see how Dakshinamurti Sotra in one verse explains to us all creation. Okay. The, um, in creation, everything is born out of Jada Maya. No transaction is possible without the Sharira Trayam. Okay. These are all statements. Baker becomes the dreamer, experiencer, Chaitanyam. Brahman becomes the baker, experiencer, Chaitanyam. Okay? This point I have explained to you right in the beginning. It is coming here. Think about it. This is what I explained right in the beginning. I am ending it today. today's session with the same thing. How do I know this Brahman? I look at my own experience. My experience is, I alone become the dreamer and the dream world. Similarly, Upanishad is telling me, there is a higher self. The lower self is Nidra Shakti. My Shakti, Jiva, all you have a Jiva. All, all Jivas have a Jiva, the Nidra Shakti. You can go to sleep and then dream. Project a world. Similarly, Brahman is projecting this entire world for the in the waking state. And the same Brahman, when it gets reflected in all our minds, becomes the experiencer of the waking world. You become one experiencer, I become another experiencer, because the enclosure mind is different, body is different. Body and mind is in a particular city. You are in London, you are in America, I am in India, you are in India, I am here in Singapore. All this body, mind, is location is different. But the consciousness which is enclosed is one. Okay? Taitri Upanishad is famous for two vicharas. One is Anupravesha vichara. And the second is Brahma Lakshana Vichara. Brahma Lakshana Vichara is taken place in the first verse. Satya Jnana Mananta. Anupravesha Vichara is 263. That is what we have done today. Okay. All these are all revisions of what we have done today. You can go through them uh, in your... Uh, in your uh, in your own free time next week we will start from this 656 so we have covered 55 pages today next week we'll start from this 656 page where shankara's commentary we will discuss in different different upanishad and uh, anupravesha comes in many upanishads also bradhanik upanishad chandogya upanishad aitreya upanishad all the upanishads this Anupravesha is a very common topic which Shankara, ba Shankara ba Bashyam is written. Okay, so I will stop here. I wish you everybody a very happy Diwali and uh, uh, a very, very uh, great occasion to celebrate our knowledge also. We have all through this, throughout this year, we have learned different Upanishads. We have tried to bond very deep into our knowledge of uh, this entire creation and also of the creator. Okay. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnahat Purnamudachare Purnasya Purnamathaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om. If you have any questions, you can ask them today. Yes, Purusha Suktam is also talking about Anupravesham. You're right. 
Anupravesham is a very important topic. Uh, if you are in spiritual study and you want to know your real self as Atma or Brahman, you must study Anupravesha in one of the texts in a very deep fashion, like how we have done today. Uh, uh, your mind should be able to be, your mind should be able to understand this concept. It's not very difficult. It's, a, it's an easy concept, but if you, you need to understand it with reference to the dream and the waker. Similarly, super waker, Brahman and the waking. If this Anupravesha is understood, the entire Vedanta becomes very easy to understand. Uh, it, it, this is an extremely important concept. It's a, a, a very important topic um, in the entire Vedanta because Paramartika Satyam, Vyavaharika Satyam, these two Satyams, these are all both Satyam. And then Pratibhasika Satyam, the three Satyams, three realities. One reality is the Super Vekar which is Brahman, which is Atma. Second reality is the Vekar. The third one, the Vekar is called as Vyavaharika. Then dream reality is called as Pratibhasika. There are three different levels. Understanding the levels is extremely important and it can be done only by the, with the help of Anupravesha uh, uh, anu, Anupravesha um, uh, vacuums. So this section, what we have done today, we have finished that. Uh, very important section. You can revise the notes, you can revise, uh, you can listen to anybody else's commentary also on the same topic. Okay, Shanta, you have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah I was uh, uh, looking at that concept or thinking about the concept as you were explaining about enclosed and enclosure. Um, so when you start thinking of enclosed and enclosure, then um, from Brahman, first thing which came was Akasha, and Akasha encloses everything. So uh, is that the way to understand that Brahman can have many forms because Brahman only enters the Akasha and once he enters Akasha, it is automatically he enters um, all the sentient beings. Um, I don't know. Am yeah, I you're right. You're right. right way? <laughs> yeah. See, in the next section, next week or, or the following week, there, there, are, uh, there are future mantras which will where Shankara Vicharya will say that this end, okay, you have understood this correctly. So what, uh, the first thing which I want to tell you is, yes, uh, Brahman, pure consciousness exists by itself. The first thing which is, which is born out of Brahman is Akasha. And in Akasha, the whole universe is existing. What is very important to understand is that Brahman is Satyam, Akasha and the world is Mithya. Because Akasha and the world is Karyam product, born. Karanam is Brahman. Karanam can exist by itself. Karyam is dependent. Therefore, how should I know this? Go back to your sleep state. Start from the sleep state and say, in the slave state, I am Brahman. I have no other, I am the Karanam for the sleep state. Pragna, or uh, we call it the Karana Prapancha. So I am there, I can exist by independently, that is what the Upanishad is revealing to me as the super baker. What happens to me in the waking? As soon as I wake up, means what? The mind of a jiva wakes up. The mind is a product of the Panchabhutas. It is created by Ishwara for the purpose of Prarabdha Karma exhaustion. 
knowing this Brahman as the Karanam for the entire Jagat, I become free. That is the purpose of the whole study. That is where the focus of the uh, of the of the entire uh, Upanishad is knowing that. Now only now what I am trying to do is understanding the creation as I experience it. So the creation is being analyzed with reference to how that it happens. It is an anupravesha means it is a it is like a reflection. This it will come in the future slides, but I'm telling you in advance what Shankaracharya is bringing to us is he says that like a reflection which happens in a mirror, all our minds are like mirrors. Consciousness is always there. It is all it like the original face. Original face is always there with or without the mirror and the reflection in it. Mirror is the mind. Reflection is the consciousness, the reflected consciousness in the mind which powers the mirror, which powers the antakarana. Antakarana then, because of its sanchita karma, will experience the world outside of names and forms and then it will go into unmanifested state. Manifestation is the waking state. Unmanifestation for the jiva is the sleep state. So waking and sleep belongs to the jiva. It never belongs to Brahman. It, Brahman has no change. Brahman is vivartha karanam, changeless cause. What is the changing cause? The mind. And the sanchita karma. That is the visesha karanam for the jagat. Changeless cause remains changeless throughout creation. Okay. So I have gone a little bit uh, uh, ahead to so explain to you. It, yeah. Yeah. So would it be then that uh, the akasha, when the first akasha is formed, uh, it could have been, I don't know why we need to have, I mean, from there itself, the reflected consciousness or the reflection of Brahman on the Akasha uh, could have uh, almost meant that the Pravesha, Anu Pravesha is happened in the form of reflection. Yeah, correct. That's right. That is why you call it Ishvara. When it happens in Akasha, we call it Ishvara. When it happens in the body, in the mind, in our own mind, we call it jiva. Oh, okay. Now you're clear? Yeah, so the first form is with the Ishwara. That's okay. right. It is Ishwara first. That is Ishwara Shishti. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Then never okay. Uh, there is also some remark here. Uh, then you say Akasha is Mithya. That is nothing. How a thing enter into nothing? No, no, no. See, when I say nothing, it doesn't mean non-existent. This is, many, many people make this mistake. There are three categories. I've explained this in the previous, maybe you weren't there that time. There are three categories. One category is Sat. Sat is always there, existent, which is my higher nature, super waker status, consciousness, existence is always there. That is called as Sat. What is Asat, non-existent? The second, one more category is there, which is Tuchya. Uh, the, the Asat is, is basically, Asat is generally referred as Mithya. The se second category is Tuchya. Tuchya means it is never there. Flowers in the sky, rabbit's horn, uh, so, so many things. Uh, these are the examples given by the Shruti, by the, by the, by the Veda. Rabbit never has horns. A deer has horns. A human being never has horns. So horns for a human being or a rabbit is non-existent. So there are several things in the universe which are non-existent. There is only one thing which is there, which is always existent, which is called as Sat. In between these two, Sat and Tutsham, existent and non-existent, there is a third category which only Vedanta 
proposes. In order to explain creation, Vedanta proposes because it studies the Upanishads and says that the Veda is saying there is only one Paramarthika Satyam and it is also talking about creation, which means what? It is saying that creation is there, but it is Mithya. Mithya means what? It is seemingly existing. It is appearing seemingly there, like yesterday's uh, waking state. It was seemingly there, again it disappeared. Yesterday is gone, today is different. Again today, tomorrow will be different. Tomorrow is Diwali, we'll be enjoying. So, so what I'm saying is, there is a third category, which is called as seemingly existent. Akasha is Mithya. Anything which is seemingly existent is called as Mithya. Okay. okay, okay. And what is the ex best example of seemingly existent? Dream. Dream is the best example for Mithya. Can we say it is existent? No. Can we say it is non-existent? No. Can we say it was seemingly existent? Yes. Waking is exactly like dream. Waking cannot be said as Sat, it is existent. It cannot be said it is Asat, which is uh, Tucham, which is non-existent. But it is said as Mithya. Mithya's another word is Asat. It is a technical term. And so waking is Asat, dream is Asat, sleep is Asat. What is Sat then? Sat is the substratum, Adhishthana. It is the substratum which is called as Satyam Jnana Marantam. I have to drop my identification with this body mind, which is Mithya, and identify with the pure consciousness, which Upanishad says is your real nature. Once I understand this, what will happen to me? My samsara, which I am thinking is so real to me, is gone forever. Will just come and go, and any time you will say, "Okay, fine, I was joyful, I was happy." These are all conditions of the mind. Mind comes into manifestation. Mind goes out of manifestation in sleep state. This is what the jiva is. I am not that jiva. Thumb is gone out of me. I am. Brahma Bhava comes into me, Jiva Bhava goes in. Am I clear? With these three, yeah. I can take the whole Upanishad, the whole Bhagavad Gita, and the entire Brahma Sutra with three words, technical words. Sat, Mithya, and Tucham. Non-existent, existent, and seemingly existent. Okay, there's another question Mani Chandan is asking. All our experiences with Triputi, how can we transcend this Triputi to realize Brahman? It happens to us very naturally in sleep. Triputi is gone. There's no Triputi in sleep. And who are we in sleep? Brahman. So naturally we transcend Triputi, knower, known, and knowing process is naturally done. Some people try to do it in samadhi. That is a very deliberate process of dropping the three knower, known, and knowing instruments. But not required. It is not must. You should never, it, it, samadhi is not a must for realization, for moksha. It is one of the methods. Yoga says that that is one of the methods to realize the self. But what we are saying is through jnanam, I, we can drop the triputi. Especially when we do the Mandukya Upanishad, you go through the Mandukya Upanishad once, or you go through the Keno Upanishad, the uh, the the, uh, the uh, Pratibodha uh, the Pratibodha mantra or you do the Anupravesha mantra properly, you will know how to transcend the Triputi. Just attend the next one or two sessions, you'll know how, what is transcendence. See, what Shankaracharya says is that 
the only way I can transcend it is to say I am Sakshi. I am Sakshi to the Javaharika state. Which you can say, I am a Sakshi. This is a very simple matter. There, Sankaracharya says, remain as Sakshi. Even in your waking state, you say, I am a Sakshi to the body or the sense organs hearing the talk. Sense organs are hearing the talk. I am a Sakshi of the sense organs. Sakshi never changes. Sakshi is Vivarta Karanam for the Jiva and for the world and for Ishwara also. It is a changeless cause. So by claiming yourself to be Sakshi, you can transcend Triputi. This is the only method. There is no other method. Remain as Sakshi. Sakshi, see, it's not difficult to remain as Sakshi. You give it a try for a few times, you will be able to remain. Anytime you can remain as a Sakshi. What you have to tell in your mind is, I am Sakshi. Practice saying, I am Aham Sakshi Asmi. I am Sakshi of this body mind complex. Body and mind are visible to me right now. So what is the what is the uh, what is the uh, nature of sakshi this you must learn, this you must this is known from the shruti sakshi is existent with or without the upadis what is the upadi upadi is the mind primarily it is the mind and when the mind is woken up, the Sakshi is there. Sakshi is witnessing all the thoughts in your mind, your emotions. The moment you become Sakshi of your emotions, 99% of your emotions, you will be able to handle it very easily. You will never be swallowed up by the emotions. People who attend Vedanta sessions, class, uh, these type of sessions, they understand the Veda, they will never be drawn or swallowed up by the emotions. A normal person who doesn't know the Sakshi principle of the mind, they will get swallowed up. They will say that I am undergoing sorrow. I am undergoing depression. I am undergoing uh, so many problems in life. But as Sakshi, you can say, body, mind is undergoing prarabdha karmas, uh, sorrow or joy. Both is possible. So, Manikandan, have I answered your question? Okay. Um, Hariyom Shikharji. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Ahriyam Shekharji, this is Vijaya here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Venkatesh, I'll come back to you. I'll just finish with Vijaya. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, so uh, two, two, two things I thought I'll just uh, try to uh, seek uh, the clarification if uh, my thought process is right. See, one thing is when you were talking just now about the Sakshi, uh, the Sakshi, uh, when it is uh, without in these three states, wherein it becomes actually enclosed, wherein the the drishtatvam, which is unattached, unassociatedness, uh, comes, which is the, the stage of turiyam. Uh, whereas when it actually, when you wake up, it has, it 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 does become the drishti, drishta, but it tries to become little attached and associated. And that's the reason why probably it uh, maligns with the triputi. The, the second aspect, pulling it further into the closed and enclosed. See, the first modification of the Brahman, when it becomes the Ishwara, Nirgunatvam becomes Sagunatvam in the sense there is this um, re reduction of the potency. So when we really talk about this um, enclosed and uh, uh, enclosed and, and encased, mm -hmm. can we use the example of say electricity, which is unlimited in its power, but when it is needs to actually get manifested from its unmanifested stage, it needs to be 
attuned to the kind of appliances and appliances have their own limitations like exactly the jiva so so to that extent the brahman when it gets modified into ishwara or further modified into jiva it actually uh, reduces its potency is that the right way to say that when the brahman reflects as to the basa into that uh, the uh, jiva the jiva has got a lesser potency and that's what it, it only manifests to the capacity of a jiva okay good see uh, uh, i will answer the second question first the second question is does the brahman's capacity reduce or not it doesn't reduce brahman's capacity it is only jiva who is experiencing that capacity with reference to that jiva you can say yes brahman's capacity gets reduced because it's just a reflection in my body but brahman when you look at it as brahman point of view brahman is the same all the time so shifting your attention to jiva yes but shifting your attention to brahman it is the same all the time for all the people it is the same brahman's capacity never gets reduced brahman is just pure consciousness like for example the sun is there the sun is getting reflected in the water suppose you keep a bucket of water it gets reflected nothing happens to the sun sun is remains the same the capacity of sun never changes the the capacity of the uh, sun's reflection may change according to the buckets of water one yeah. you may have a big size you may have a small size you may have a small bubble but the reflections can be different because depending on the container which is the body mind complex yeah so if you understand is the example of that works with me because yeah. this yeah. not exactly in chapter 2 also it talks about the first modification that being yes. the chara yes now coming back to your first question what you are saying is that that pure consciousness if it gets reflected or if it is uh, if it becomes the jiva then it undergoes it 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 undergoes a certain uh, sorrows joys in life and see these are all with reference to the jiva right. nothing happens to brahman brahman is always the same it's just a pure pure existence principle pure consciousness principle it never participates it is never it participates in any vyavahar it alone is that is the truth it it can it doesn't have it doesn't increase or decrease its capacity in any form at any time it it always is the same does it answer your question yes yes sir. yes shekhar ji so to that extent when i try to that's what the the what how 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 do i really envision is how uh, the the quality of my medium is uh, is uh, is makes a jiva to experience the brahman that powerful so that's the reason why we use the word right. the quality brahman. means it, it is the quality of your vrittis on that particular day that's all yeah You see, you are uh, all of us. We are having thoughts every day. Some days I have very good thoughts throughout the day. I am very very happy because I am accomplishing so many things. In some days I do not accomplish. I fail miserably in in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night also. I am very my mind is very very uh, down. Uh, see, in those times, what happens? It is the it is the vrittis it is the thoughts it, the upadi which is called as the mind it is undergoing the uh, the uh, undergoing the joy or sorrow of the day this happens to us throughout the life i am only giving you the uh, example of one day one morning afternoon evening but this is what happens to all the jivas all the time so my attention has to be slowly withdrawn from the mind to the pure consciousness as the adhishthanam no mithya can exist without adhishthanam at the same time when i am experiencing the mithya mind i have to say aham 
Sakshi Adishthanam Asmi. All the time. You see, it is not at a, at a later point of time when I am doing japa or, uh, or in meditation or in samadhi, I become Brahman and all that. No, no, no. Every time, at any time, you are Brahman only. You are all the time pure consciousness. That is Adishthanam. Especially next, in the next Upanishad in Mandukya, when I do this uh, sessions on uh, Adishthanam, it becomes so clear that I, you see, you cannot be not consciousness, not Brahman. That is how the teaching will be. You will be forced to say, I am that consciousness, Adishtanam, only all the time. And Shankaracharya's commentary is so brilliant in that, in, in, in Madhukya. Is, uh, it's, it's something which you go through it and you will, you will, you will be able to uh, abide in it. See, today what happens is this knowledge of pure consciousness comes and goes, comes and goes. It is, it is fleeting. But uh, when you go through a proper study of this uh, Mandukya, you will find it, you can, you can remain abiding in that uh, pure self much more easier, in a much more simpler way. Uh, uh, Venkatesh, uh, you have some question? Yeah, mm -hmm. that, uh, see, when it was discussed that uh, the Brahman is not desireless, it, it, it struck me as a, probably a new dimension of Brahman that we are discussing was is not something that uh, we are not talked in that way before. That's one thing. And uh, the other, if, if, if we say that Brahman is not desireless, but only difference is that uh, it is a non-binding desire. Uh, can we have? Uh, can we understand it a little better with some examples? Okay, good. See, for example, you say, uh, okay, number one, first thing is, why do we say? Why are we discussing Lord with desires, Brahman with desires? Why we are discussing? Because it is a part of the verse in Taitri Upanishad which is describing creation. 263, chapter 2, 6th Anuvaka, 3rd Mantra of Taitri Upanishad. It starts with So Kamayata and then Bahushyam Praja Praja It uh, 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 Then it says, see, this particular verse is keep telling us what is this creation. <laughs> You see, if you know Brahman and you can remain as pure Brahman, that is fantastic. But always Upanishad will come to the level of the seeker. And it will explain the seeker what this creation is first. So to understand creation, the Upanishad says that the Lord, the creator, Bhagwan, had a desire to become many. Uh, 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 this is a, there are two, two lessons to, lear, to be learned from here. What is the first lesson? The first lesson is, Lord is a sentient being. It is not an inert substance. Existence, it appears very inert. But the moment you join existence with consciousness, it becomes a sentient being. So existence mixed up, mixed up with the sentiency is what is the nature of the higher self. It can remain as it is without any desire also. It can remain without desires. It can come with desires. It can remain with desires means what? Suppose, uh, so, it, so the first lesson is Brahman is a sentient being, therefore, the desire, when the Upanishad says desire means immediately what will happen, you and I will think the Lord also is a sentient being. It is not an inert being, it is a sentient being. Then the second lesson is what? That Lord has desires to create this world. This is said in all the Upanishads. Chandogya Upanishad says, Sadeva Saumya Idamagriya Asin, such principle was there, it had a desire to create the world. Why, 
why do we say that desire to create the world? Because we are seeing the world. We are experiencing the world. From the world standpoint, I have to answer how the world was created, why the world was created. Because our standpoint today is, I am a jiva with a body-mind complex. I am seeing and experiencing the world. There are So there must be a creator who created this universe and he has the desire to create this world for the jivas. That is what we call it as Ishwara Srishti. He is the Samanya Karanam. Samanya Karanam means he is a general cause. Like we have the general cause, who, like for example the government. They will build the roads, they will build uh, uh, bridges, they will build uh, certain uh, facilities. Similarly, the Lord builds all this universe of high elements so that a jiva can come with a body as per his product of the karma and then grow and realize that jiva is nothing but Brahma. Uh, are you able to understand now, Vinkitesh? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I think I'm following you probably because the question also comes because I think I have read somewhere, I think probably in Ramana Maharshi's talks or something, yeah. that it's not bad to have disease, but it is important to have disease without attachment. That is the... Uh, that so, I agree. That's correct. See, you're, you're, at, at, at your level, what you're saying is, if I have desires, it is okay. If I have bind, you see, our desires, today, for example, if I have 10 desires, there are five, uh, maybe there are eight desires which are binding desires. There are only two non-binding desires. Slowly, I have to change it to more of non-binding desires, that means, and less of binding desires. That means, what should I say? To, uh, I, I should say if it if it happens, it's okay. If it doesn't happen in life, it's also it's, it's okay. I will live with it. That is how you make desires into non-binding non-binding desires. And the more you make all your desires as non-binding, the more you will find you are growing up in spirituality. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, English. Yeah, Shanta, you have this. Uh, you have another question. Yeah, I'm just listening to this uh, response which you gave, and uh, because um, Ishvara is sentient, uh, it, it has desire to create this universe, or you know, has created this universe for us, and then created all these jivas or uh, prakriti. Um, it means every sentient being, whether in the reflected form or the Brahman form has desire yeah sure so, yeah so is it not without so, desire I mean, we, are, we, we can't experience the waking state yes because, uh, because you will always... brahman desired yeah because yes. brahman desired to create this universe the universe was created and therefore we all jivas and you know all this is created prakriti but my question now is one step beyond where if brahman has God is sentient and has desires, so therefore, uh, he has uh, he's also in a way attacked by Maya Shakti, uh, to have that desire. Just like how we have we are engrossed in this Maya Jal or Maya Shakti to have desires, and you know, as you said, that yeah, if you have one ice cream, you want a second one, or you have one sari, you have another, we want another one. So Brahman also has uh, his own desires where he said, okay, I created this uh, loka, Bhu loka, now let me create another five lokas and another seven lokas, another 14 lokas. Um, is it, I, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, understand whether the sentiency gives you the uh, Ichha to desire or is it the Maya Shakti which actually pushes you to desire? Okay, good. It's a good question. See, the one thing which you are missing in this equation is there is a factor called ignorance. Jiva is with ignorance and desire. Ishvara is with jnanam and desire. He knows the saguna 
portion, he also knows I am the Nirguna Brahman. Jiva doesn't know it. Jiva is an ignorant. He is ignorant about his Mula Vidya. He has got Mula Vidya. He has got ignorance. So his, because of his ignorance only, he, his desires become more and more binding. Whereas the Lord, he always knows his, uh, his nature. I am of the nature. Nirguna nature is known to him. So there is no ignorance for the Lord. There is no Mula Vidya. There is only a projection. Vikshepa Shakti is there, but there is no Avarna Shakti in the Lord. That is the difference between a Jiva's bindingness and the Ishwara's non-binding nature. But in a way, Ishwara is bound and unbound as well. I mean, no, he is bound. He, no, no. The, the creation, the, that is why there are two conditions I said for creation. One is the general karanam, samanya karanam. Another is visesha karanam. Visesha karanam is the jiva specific punya power. Yeah. So there is a binding there. Uh, no, that is the, that is the th thing which bounds the jiva. Yeah. Ishwara is, uh, cannot create the, uh, cannot do the creation without the jiva. That it cannot be possible because mm -hmm. there has to be a contribution of punya papam for the creation. Yes. So, uh, so Brahman, in a way, then is bound and unbound. So, in some form, it is unbound, but in some form, it is bound to the jivas because. Uh, he, uh, he has to keep the mathematics of uh, his punyam and papam and then accordingly put him in that. But he's not bound in, in the sense he knows that I have my nature. What is my original nature? Without Ooh, creation. So, so they, okay. So that's the difference. Ah, right? See, you and I also can be, okay. you and I also will suppose we say that I am without the body, mind and the world in my sleep state. That, that is my real state. Mm -hmm. Then all my uh, desires become unbinding. It becomes there's no binding for them. Hmm. This is the way I remove my ignorance. I become the same as the uh, as. And then you still do yes. your of the karma. And then you the that comes and goes. That is just a small incidental thing. That's all. That's okay. Good, very good, Chanta. You are very deep in thinking. I'm glad you are asking these such questions. Good. These are, these are the way in which you clear your doubts and then slowly your mind grows. Shekhar Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, Vajra. Shekhar yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sh Shekhar Ji, uh, uh, I was, just, I was he hearing the response uh, from you to Shanta. Um, see, when we say that uh, the Brahman uh, with the coat of uh, Satvarajas Tamas Maya becomes Seishwara, being that as a standpoint, can we say that desire is basically a function of prarabdha, so hence applicable to the jiva. Whereas Brahman, it doesn't function. It's only a sakshi or a witness. It's not a karta or a bhokta. It's, it's just pure sattva. It's pure sattva. Yeah, no so rajas, no tamas. Correct. So if, to that extent, it will, it can, it will, it's not a karta or a bhokta. So right. it should it should not have a desire from a standpoint of a Brahman. Maybe when it gets maligned to to you know some aspect of Maya, it does not bound by Maya, but it still um, uh, uh, mingles with Maya for creation of the Ishwara, right? Yeah, so Brahman, it, see the Saguna nature of Brahman is which we call it as Ishwara is only with reference to as long as we are seeing the world. Correct. So the desire will not be a function of a Brahman, maybe to the extent of Ishwara. How do we say? Because Brahman cannot have a desire. It's just the nature of he beingness, right? That's that is Nirguna Brahman. When we when we when he comes down to the level of creation, he becomes Saguna. He becomes Saguna. Okay. When he becomes Saguna, he has desires. Desire. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. I wish you everybody a very happy Diwali. We'll continue our study next week. Thank you. And wish you the same. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Namaste. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Thank you.